afternoon. Um, um, we were lucky enough to have Mario and Sam at the conference, and it was an excellent opportunity to um, get aware of um, accessibility features and uh, lack or lack thereof or misfeature or whatever uh, of our system, which is something that um, we basically never managed to see at the conference. And so we kind of improvised um, uh, this um, uh, this event where uh, uh, Sam and Mario will show how the user computer and uh, cover um, uh, and tell us about how um, what works, what doesn't, and uh, well, you know what you're going to talk about because I don't. <laughs> so I'll, I'll stop making it up and uh, let you speak. So. Hi, I'm Sam Hartman. Uh, I've been a Debian developer since um, 2000 or so, and I've been blind a lot longer than that. Um, and so I, I think what, what Mario and I like to do here is talk a little bit about uh, how we use computers. Um, and it's actually very different. You'll see um, a, a very different interaction style from, um, from the two of us. And then we kind of like to go into discussing Debian accessibility and discussing what we can all do to help. I am, am a user as far as accessibility is concerned in Debian. Um, I do report bugs, you know, occasionally I'll generate a patch to some software, um, but I am not maintaining any of the accessibility packages in, in Debian. Mario is doing a heck of a lot of work to make it possible for me to use Debian, and I really appreciate that and appreciate the work of everyone else in the accessibility team. Um, and so, you know, I, I want to stress that I'm, I'm just, I'm not a developer of this software. So, you know, take that um, grain, of, grain of salt when, when you're thinking about accessibility. Um, also, um, there are certainly a lot of other resources for this. Um, again, I'm just a user. I haven't really been studying accessibility other than, than you know, as it directly affects me. Um, Jason White, who's a Debian developer and who's also blind, gave a talk at LCA um, that uh, Martin Kraft pointed me at um, that seems like it would have been a, a really interesting talk going into um, accessibility going into sort of the evolution of various technologies and stuff like that. Um, and apparently he, he and Mario have done a lot more research into this. And so there are a lot of, um, of um, different resources going on. So one thing I'll say is that how I use a computer has changed drastically in the last few years. Um, about four years ago, I gained this totally new feature. It's called a cell phone. Well, I had a cell phone before that. But people have been telling me that cell phones had these cool features like the ability to send short text messages to people and the ability for the cell phone to remember a phone number for you. Um, <laughs> I didn't have that, and I wasn't sure I really believed them. There were, there were certainly a bunch of complicated clicks you needed to do to change the ringtone, and you know, had to memorize them and all that sort of thing. Um, but about four years ago, a German company came out with um, some software that allowed a cell phone to talk and I could do cool things like have my phone book in my cell phone instead of in my head. I didn't have to remember everyone's phone number. And that meant I could call a lot more people. Um, I'd, I've been using computers with speech since 1981. Um, but up until last May, I didn't run an X server because there wasn't a point. There weren't any, the, the accessibility of X applications um, just wasn't good enough to make it worth um, doing anything. I, I did use um, a console application, um, and, and I, you know, I'm from MIT, so I used Emacs Speak, uh, which is a collection of ELISP on top of Emacs that makes your Emacs talk. And we'll talk about how you get from there to, to general accessibility in a really frightening way in just a moment. Um, but um, first, I'm going to start out by showing what I do with, with X. Um, and it's a program called um, GNOME Orca, which will so which has this, this, this great, um, you know, exciting UI with three buttons. Um, <laughs> now, one of the interesting things is, is I haven't actually gotten the help button. It pulls up a manual, I'm told, um, but that doesn't seem to be accessible. So uh, I really actually don't know what the manual says uh, that way. But, you know, um, I've actually got, I, I've read the, the XML, and so that's how I found out what the manual said. But, but there's probably got to be a better way. Now. This is really, um, help button, really tab, preferences slow. Button, 
So okay, I'm going to pull up the preferences, preferences and get this to the rate at which I normally use it. Orca preferences. Uh, tab. Speech. Tab. Tab. Speech. System. Co. Tab. Speech. Synth. Tab. Voice. Set. Tab. Person. Co. Now this is great. Default I mean, it has lots of different shift. speech. That, you know, you can get it into Latin or Lojban or tab, you know, rate, perhaps colon, even some more usable languages. Now, is it, you know, what I'm doing here is I'm just using normal. Um, I am using normal uh, GNOME keystrokes for navigating a slider. Right. Speech enabled. Speech OK mutter. Okay. User settings reloaded. Um, that I can actually do somewhat Auto faster than that, but that's, preferences button. that's about what I've been doing for GNOME. Left now, of course, Run I might e want e to e K um, also use um, console applications, so we're going to pull up Emacs V. Now, um, by the power of, of also, which I also East gained... Uh, capital, press, capital, CH, cap, turn off DK, oven, click, oven, um, local, one off. of the things you'll see here is that since these are using a completely different interface to generate speech, they have um, uh, different volume settings and that sort of thing. Um, up until last May, I actually didn't have the ability to play music and use my computer at the same time. Um, basically, because the speech sec systems I were using wa weren't compatible with ALSA. And why are you doing that to me? Okay. Uh, and I'm sorry, I don't know how to adjust the volume here. Um, so, but one of the problems with Emacs is that it's single threaded. So, you don't actually want to do very much in this outer Emacs, especially anything that could touch the, the network. Uh, why? What? Uh, Run program colon. Okay. One right so right. we're going to pull up a shell. PM. Two right. Unset D-I-S-P-L-A-Y. Um, and we're going to, we don't Three really right. want right. X applications to come up here. And then S -S within this, we'll run screen. Right. Right. So now we have Emacs, or screen within Emacs. Now, One right. of course, right. e -M -A -T -S. I want to access my mail, and that's also an Emacs. But, but I don't want to have that in the outer Emacs, because if the IMAP connection ever hangs, then all my console applications would hang. So we have Emacs inside of Emacs. Um, <laughs> Stallman, <laughs> I'm sure, would be you know, more fine at this point. Now, um, one, of the thing, one of the things you can, and note that these have completely different interfaces to, to the GNOME applications. Um, of course, we can go over to. Screen reader slash man. Then come down dash pentam off zero. Then come down dash pentam off zero. We can go up to our friendly um, pentafire site and look at you know this is Ice Weasel, new event slash paper link, which is reasonably accessible. Tab all events link. And I can do these things. You know, I can basically click on any of those links. Three wonderful link. Then come to attendees link. Lock. Then come set up website link. Then come fake tab tab create account link. Tab location text HTTPS code. Then come down heading level one. Welcome to the paper submission system. Heading level two. Create oh, account. Okay. Left shift. Well, that's not actually the screen I left wanted. Alt. Uh, where do I right get? Shift. Then come down website link. Tab create account link. Tab location text HTTPS loading. It? Please wait. HTTPS colon slash tab search using Google Tech. Tab then come down dash enter off left and you click on quote right shift. Create account link. Then come down website link. Tab tab location text HTTP. Verified by colon. So then come down heading level. Space, tab, location text, tab, search using Google text, tab, no. image, tab, login link, tab, create account link, R login link, okay, return, loading, so please wait, finish loading, then come down, dash, enter, off, zero, off, three, dot, time, off, zero, tab, registration, details, link, oh, okay, return, this is loading, what please okay. wait, right, so pe someone has redesigned the Pinterest site this week, apparently, um, tab, registration, <laughs> details, link, tab, new event, slash, paper, link, tab, tab, all events, link, tab, chat, tab, tab, travel, dates, tab, 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 travel, dates, tab, free, wonderful, then come, attendees, link, tab, log up, link, Tab, then come seven when sat link. Tab, 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 general panel, text, tab, type in text, last name, first name, text, tab, then come down when sat link. Tab, general panel, first name, text, general, general text, contact, text, track, general text. Okay, and you see we have these tabs up here, and I actually don't know if it, it all makes it clear what I'm, I'm locating, but we have the tabs, you know, general contact, etc., etc. <laughs> Unfortunately, Ice Weasel doesn't seem to be good enough that you can actually click on those JavaScript on, on clicks. Um, which basically, sh basically, that's the sort of state of accessibility of of, win of uh, GNOME web browsers under uh, under X. Left alt. Um, Run and so, left for left a lot shift. of websites, unfortunately, I find that that I am still forced <laughs> to use Windows. Um, and this will be a little bit amusing because what we'll find here is that it's yet another speech synthesizer with a completely different screen reader. So now we've got three screen readers um, 
and you know, three different access technologies involved um, for three different things. One of the um, one of the things I and this stuff works pretty well, but there are some problems, um, well, like the fact that you know uh, that, that, that Ice Weasel has a little bit to go, and I'll demonstrate our dear friend. Run application escape. GKS. Oh yeah, I uninstalled GKSU because it was uh, right. Run application uh, select OM. Okay, I, I will not show that. Um, basically, if you run GKSU, even with um, its keyboard focus grab disabled, it will um, it will hang your entire GNOME session. Apparently, any single misbehaved application will take out the entire accessibility module. Um, but on the other hand, things are really, really looking up. I can use OpenOffice well enough that if I want to... Then come find the max 22 book of screen readers, sun XVM virtual box, slash XV left, paranet, double user, text right, paranet, accessible. Um, I can use... <laughs> Hopefully Microsoft won't mind that. Um, you know, um, but um, I can still use most... I can use a lot of software. For example, I can use Ekaka, I can use Rhythmbox, I can use... Um, not that many. VLC doesn't really work that well. Totem sometimes uh, one of Your its interfaces. Your might be at risk and to software might not yeah, be yeah, installed. Yeah, yeah. Play this balloon to fix so, so we have an entirely Windows different suite synthesizer. Custom control. Um, Arrow. With, Arrow. Um, Start with Arrow. Start But menu. basically, Start menu. this will allow me to. Most Windows software works pretty well, and it's really nice to have both of them alongside. Um, but um, but basically, there you know there are a lot of GNOME applications that are usable. OpenOffice has some words, for example. Uh, you get a dialogue in OpenOffice. Um, it doesn't read the text of the dialogue. It just says, OpenOffice 2.4, yes, no. And you can click on yes or no. Um, and so, but, but on the other hand, the main body of OpenOffice is actually quite usable and um, is you know, reasonably, um, I mean, I can write documents in it. Um, I, I actually find it pretty useful for writing web pages. Uh, when for some reason I don't want to write straight HTML or LaTeX or something like that. Um, the other big gotcha is that there is no KDE accessibility to speak of at all. Uh, not there yet. Um, but I want to stress that for something that, that basically wasn't worth using at all, in my opinion, a, a year ago, yeah. this is really amazing progress. And I'm very pleased with what the community has done. I think there's a lot to do. But this is great. Um, and it basically, one of the things you are learning here is that accessibility is composed of a lot of different solutions. You find everything that's out there. You get it all working together. And then um, now I think Mario's going to talk about a totally different way of using the computer. Um, do, should I step down at this point? Or? And does Mario have a microphone, or do we? And am I going to leave? Hello? Hello? Ah, yeah, it works. Hi, okay. Um, my name is Mario Lang, and I uh, actually joined Debian back in 2002 just to uh, get some accessibility into Debian. And first thing I did was to create a Debian accessibility project inside of Debian. It's basically with some mailing list and yeah, trying to coordinate things. And then I went and uh, packaged all sorts of obscure software, I would say, that uh, yeah, just blind people or people with disabilities are going to need and use. Um, as Sam has already explained, uh, for a long time for blind people, the only way to access Linux was uh, basically the console. Um, so yeah, this is a little bit, uh, I, I'll, I guess I'll start with this. Um, yeah, um, maybe to explain uh, how I'm the using the computer, uh, um, I'm actually the uh, uh, person that uh, really likes to use Braille output. Uh, I, I know how to use speech and I sometimes do it for like reading long text, uh, but yeah, I'm more used to, to, to reading Braille and I'm really more comfortable if, if I yeah, can touch what is on my screen. So uh, how does this work actually technically? I mean, uh, uh, I'm using for a console, I'm using Braille TTY, uh, which is basically a, a, a program that uh, accesses the DevVCSA device on Linux. 
and uh, reads from there the current uh, console content. So, um, yeah. Um, a, braille, ooh, a braille display actually has, like, uh, in my case, 40 characters. Uh, and one of these characters consists of uh, like eight dots. So you, you end up having like eight dots, like in uh, eight bits. So you can represent uh, 256 different characters in one uh, posi in position. Um, yeah, Braille displays, if you want to have a portable bra Braille display, you end uh, up being uh, limited to just 40 characters because everything bigger would be like no, not portable anymore. Plug in the video and yeah, sure, sure, that email. would be great. So, does it work? Try to run x run dash dash auto. Huh? So try x, x run x run dash dash auto. <laughs> yeah, dash dash, yeah. No, there's no x. Yeah, maybe on the x. <laughs> Um, um, F N, no, not yeah, right. Right. No. So yes. now I am, I guess. Yeah. Oh, oh wow. Uh, so. And yes, I guess now X Rand dash dash auto should be able to turn on. As soon. Uh, that's one of the problems. Uh, the performance is really not good yet uh, with the uh, GNOME solution. So on my laptop, this is really slow. Yeah, that's the big question, if it's still working now. I guess not. Does it? It's searching, but not quite. Uh, okay. No. No? Okay. Unless, can I do no. FN F5? Uh, sure. Try which it. Which maybe turns on the audio, the output, maybe not. Not. Okay. Not. Whatever. Okay, sorry. Uh, uh, so, okay, where was I? Um, yes. Um, okay, uh, so since we can't really demonstrate this, I'll just talk a little bit about um, how it's supposed to work. You, you've got like 40 characters and uh, you've got like navigation keys on the display so that you can navigate uh, across the screen because uh, yeah, the screen is uh, way bigger than uh, what can be displayed. So yeah, that's basically how Braille works on console. It's no technical problem after all because text consoles are kind of like accessible by definition. Um, yeah, on, on X. It's like this. So I'm trying. I'll just show on the display pictures of red displays yeah. from my laptop. There because there's actually, uh, for developers oh, okay. of GNOME Orca, there's actually a way to uh, show what the Braille display is currently showing. Okay. So I'll give this a try. Okay. Good. Network? Yes. Okay. So, uh, I guess we've seen this already. Um, if I now go to the configuration thing and say we want to have a Braille monitor, it should actually display one. No? You'll have to hit OK. All right. Which is outside of the screen. So. Oh, you can see okay. Ah, it works. Monitor. Right. So um, this actually displays what is currently uh, on on my Braille display. 
So if I scroll around, you can actually see on the Braille monitor uh, that just a small portion is highlighted. So in this case, we are in the console. Um, and if we are like switch to, I don't know. And you can see that uh, whatever is highlighted, where the focus is, that's, uh, that part is displayed on the Braille display. There's also a way to scroll around in some sense, but yeah, most of, most of this is uh, still in development, I'd say. Um, now that I'm here, there's probably one interesting thing. Uh, maybe I should talk about uh, what's actually going on here. Um, in, as I said, on a, uh, in console mode, it's pretty easy to, to get at what, what is displayed. In, in the graphical mode, it's actually not so clear uh, how to decode what is on screen. So you can just go and do an OCR of the content on the screen that would just not work. So you need to go uh, a level deeper and actually have a way to query the application and ask the application uh, what, uh, what information it is displaying and what type of widgets those are. So um, the GNOME project actually started to implement the infrastructure necessary for doing this on, on, on free software systems in general. Um, and uh, the basic thing is called ATSPI, it's the Assistive Technology Service Provider Interface. That is kind of uh, a daemon uh, which, uh, where assistive technologies like screen readers or yeah, other tools, which we might show later to, uh, connect to, and they kind of like get a, uh, a listing of all applications that were registered and you can imagine it like a, tr a tree like structure where all this information is uh, yeah distributed to the screen reader on the other side we have, on the other side we have the toolkits which somehow need to communicate this information to the ATSPI and they do the and they do it via the uh, accessibility toolkit it's the ATK um, now, if a toolkit implements accessibility, it's usually done uh, based on standard widgets. So in GTK, for instance, or the standard widgets already implement uh, the ATK cores necessary to distribute the information to the ATSPI. So if you're an application programmer and you're using uh, standard widgets, you can usually assume uh, that the information should actually be distributed and sh should be readable. I mean, testing is, is always a good thing, but uh, as, as long as you're going with standard widget, that should actually work. If you're designing a custom widget, uh, the ATSPI has no way of knowing what kind of information you are displaying or or what kind of, of widget that is. So in this case, you actually have to link to the ATK and do manually some function calls when you create your widget so that you can tell the ATSPI what kind of widget this is. For instance, if it's a value slider or something like that, you just choose the value interface, define, okay, uh, minimum, maximum value and uh, this way, the ATSPI can still present a widget to, to a screen reader, and the screen reader can do something useful with it. Um, for developers, it's probably pretty interesting. There is one application uh, you can use to debug this information. If you have uh, um, some application like written in GTK, um, and you want to explore the, the accessibility properties of that, you can use Exerciser, um, which is packaged in Divin. Um, I'm just going to show the interface for, for a few seconds. I'm not actually a user of this because, uh, yeah. But it's really useful tool for, for sighted people and interested in developing in this area because you can uh, extremely fast uh, look at the tree that is currently exposed via ATSPI. So in this instance, for we, we can just scroll down to top level applications that I have re registered to the, uh, to the service provider interface. And to have something familiar, I guess we choose the Orca, which has an interface as well. And then I can just 
hopefully expand it. Yeah. And for instance, this is like the quit button which registered itself. So you could now go on, on this button and, and examine uh, what interfaces have been registered, uh, what that button can do. Like it's, it's an action interface, and if it's an action interface, you can evoke the click action or something like that. So that's basically how you would uh, look into the accessibility infrastructure without actually using it yourself. That's probably the best debug tool that's around. Um, regarding toolkits, what is currently available and what does work? Um, GTK being the first uh, to, to actually implement this since version 2, so GTK 2 standard widgets are supposed to work. Um, as some of you might know, the Java Swing uh, API has for a long time always had internal accessibility and this is also bridged to the ATSP ID stays on Linux. So if you are running a standard Java Swing application and uh, do some minimal configuration, then uh, yeah, it actually works. And uh, what is a pretty new and kind of exciting is that um, the mono people have actually done a big effort to make WinForms accessible on Linux. So if you um, have some WinForms application, uh, you can bridge that these days to the ATSPI. That's not, not packaged yet in Devon, but I'm actually uh, waiting for the mono team to, to uh, yeah, sponsor the packages which are basically already built. I tested it a few days ago at work and uh, yeah, it basically works. Uh, what is really missing, just uh, as, as Sam has already said, is uh, Qt for a long time now. Um, this is basically an implementation problem. Uh, since Qt4, they are actually claiming in the documentation that they are accessible on Linux, but the reality is they aren't because they are not bridging to something. So it's internally accessible, I guess, but mm, yeah. Um, but this is actually a technical issue. It has something to do with the uh, with Korba and uh, KDE uh, or Qt not wanting to talk to Korba and not wanting to have the dependencies. Um, currently, there is a big effort to rewrite the complete uh, ATSPI uh, on top of Dbus, and hopefully we will then all be fine and can talk to each other without having problems. So that, is, um, I, that, that should be the, the, the next big step, I hope, uh, to make a lot of other applications accessible. Um, yeah. What else am I supposed to? Uh, I, Sam and I talked before, and and I, I think we we really don't want to have this as a as a talk session alone. So it's it's more like a buff. So I I guess what's uh, yeah I guess questions right. Yeah. I guess, um, so if there are any questions out of the audience, we, uh, I, uh, we are really happy to answer them because it's, yeah, uh, the accessibility field is... is um, Hello? Yeah. Yeah? Okay, thanks. Uh, well, something that came uh, early to my mind started uh, when, uh, when Sam was explaining uh, his uh, settings and also should be... Uh, uh, well, an important point uh, with uh, the bra uh, Braille uh, access method is, uh, I guess, you have uh, even larger problems most users do regarding internationalization. I mean, uh, what what I, I can think of, and you may tell me I'm uh, way off, is that uh, when you're using uh, text-to-speech, well, the, some some strings may not be, and you you may have your pre preferences in w one language, and then things get read all garbled. And uh, uh, Mario, for you, uh, I guess, well, 256 is not enough for everybody, but I, I, I mean, uh, how, how, how do you cope with this, uh, this situation? Mm, yeah. The question is, how do you show Unicode on Braille? No, not, I mean, uh, 
it's obviously not possible to 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 uh, yeah represent a full Unicode set. Uh, there there are solutions in 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 Braille uh, at least to to represent uh, the few characters that are outside of your character set. So you usually do it with pre um, prefix characters or something like that. So you have a, a character which indicates that uh, this is something special and maybe two characters should be read at once or something like this. So there are solutions, but yes, it is a problem. You, it, uh, yeah, you can, you can just um, have all, all the available characters and really read them at once. That's, it's kind of like the problem on the Linux with console. You have got like 512 font entries. So no matter what you do on console, you are limited to, to, to a smaller amount of characters. So you have to choose what, what you are working with. OK. I'm relaying a IRC question, because uh, there was a question about how, how is the integration of the Debian installer? Like, how does it work? Or does it work anyway? Ah, OK. Uh, thanks for reminding me, actually. Um, uh, I think uh, one, of the, one of the big steps we actually made in Devon Accessibility Project was to get Devon uh, installer accessible, at least for Braille. Uh, that's something that works partly since Edge. If you knew how to do it, you could actually install a Debian system completely on your own. And it works even better since Lenny. Uh, since we have now USB auto detection, so if you have a Braille display with an USB cable, you can just connect it to a random PC and throw a DI Lenny installer in, and it will completely auto detect uh, everything, and you can just install it on yourself. That's actually something that, like on Windows, will never work because they don't have the screen reader integrated into the system. So on those uh, on those uh, operating systems, you will always relay on the help of someone else. So that's probably the reason why I'm really proud of that we got this working, actually. Yeah, uh, Christian Perry is speaking. Um, we, yes, there has been a very good integration of Braille display, as far as I know, as far as I can follow, or as far as I can understand. A great work by, by Samuel Thibault and also Mario, of course. What we are needing, probably, I would guess, is to integrate some um, speech um, output. Uh, there have been, in the past, quite two or three years ago, I remember, Around here in Extremadura, we met with some Orca people, along with Franz Pop, and we began talking about maybe integrating Orca stuff into the graphical installer. At that time, we mm -hmm. were having this uh, graphical installer, and it's based on GTK stuff. I'm mostly ignorant about all this, but it seemed to be feasible. So maybe if we just had some people working on that, uh, which is probably easier for non-blind people to, to cope with. Uh, maybe we could integrate, I, I think, Orca into the I, or to the graphical installer. Yeah, would be a very good idea. I guess the, the main problem here is actually to get uh, sound card auto detection and uh, mixer auto settings working. So uh, if you have software speech synthesis and uh, it's trying to talk to you, but the sound card is, uh, the, the mixer is not up and you have to configure this yourself, it that just doesn't work. So what we need is really a complete auto detection of sound card so that the correct modules are loaded. And then, uh, uh, yeah, the mixer needs to be adjusted so, so that it's really working. I guess it's this uh, one, of, one of the biggest steps in this direction, yeah. Yes, uh, isn't this kind of auto detection already in Debian live CDs and USB stick images that you can generate? Yes. So if you could run the installer from this live CD, you would boot to, a, you know, to an environment where you can actually browse the web and then run the installer. Um, yes, I'm sure you can. Uh, 
some people actually work like this. I mean, you can always boot some some already accessible so system okay. and 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 uh. use use the bootstrap or something like this to to get yeah. the system uh, up and running. Uh, but in my opinion, uh, to to get the eye accessible by itself is is a goal by itself. <laughs> this this. this uh, you can always uh, on Linux do it, do it, do it some way, and, and do it with some tricks or something like that. But I would really like if, if disabled people could just use the same installer than everyone else and just use it like this. Um, so I mean, I can c confirm that the live CD, if you boot it with the I want you to talk parameter, which is amusingly access equals access equals v3. Um, <laughs> It, it works. I don't remember if Orca's on the default image or if I had to burn a s separate CD. Um, one, one option to look at for DI, honestly, is, so it's my understanding these days DI can run out of a live CD. Um, that might be an easier option than, um, than getting everything working directly in DI and still allow you to use DI. Question mostly unrelated to Debian, but uh, one thing I would like to have when I have the knowledge in the room. In Norway, there's been a lot of discussion about open standards and the use of uh, uh, standardized formats in the government. One of the arguments uh, that has been put forth is that the doc format from Word is a lot more accessible than ODF, and OXML is claimed to be a lot better for blind people than ODF. Uh, PDF is also said to be a really bad format for uh, blind people. Uh, well, and I can confirm this based on how the government actually are using PDF. Printing, signing, scanning, and then sending it off is actually providing images, not text to yeah, right. blind people. Uh, but can you say something about the accessibility features of different file formats? <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> Word is Word is far better. Um, I mean, basically, I I mean, I'm not sure it matters in terms of formats um, because you can go translate, you know, formats w every which way, and and that's not such a big deal. But the accessibility of Microsoft Word is far better than the accessibility of OpenOffice today. Um, OpenOffice is making huge strides, though. Um, and so I, I really think for the most part that's a red herring. People can use either. Um, and I, I mean, I think I could get work done. It, it basically, OpenOffice is good enough that if there were um, non-accessibility reasons that you would use it instead of Word, that would be fine. Um, Word is good enough that, that certainly claiming that open formats are more accessible is, is, is just not true. Um, so I, I basically think accessibility is a red herring in the debate about what formats our government should use. Um, PDF, um, if it is actually text in the PDF, I can generally get access to that, and it doesn't bother me too bad and much. Um, I can I do have solutions using proprietary software for taking, for you know, OCRing a PDF. Um, I do that often. I would rather not have to, um, but it, it that come up. Yeah, I guess to, to uh, it, it really, uh, I mean, it, I think it's not a file format issue, but it's really an issue of the accessibility of the applications you use to access these file formats. So I wouldn't say one file format is more accessible than, uh, than another. It's really, it really depends on the application and how accessible that is. Any more questions? Uh, do you want to comment anything else? Or we can finish the talk here. Oh. Hello. Um, if you like, I could mm -hmm. show some other accessibility method. Uh, that means how to uh, type some text without any keyboard, only using a mouth. Uh, um, a mouse. Yeah, um, and there are apparently people who can only blink or see in one direction and so on, and they can uh, type some text using the, those techniques. So I'm, I, 
I'd be trying to show that. Yeah. Do it. That's actually a pretty important point I forgot to say. Uh, accessibility is not really about blind people only. We, we are just the example here right now, but uh, accessibility is really about uh, all sorts of disabilities. So uh, while we were the example now, um, the scope of the Devon Accessibility Project is actually to try to get all sorts of software uh, into Devon, which helps uh, in all sorts of situations. So um, it's probably also, uh, as Sam and I demonstrated, there is no single solution to a single problem. While we have both the same disability, we, we use the computer in, in completely different ways, actually. So um, yeah, that's an important point about accessibility. It's always about choice. You can just say, OK, you have this disability. Now you use this tool, and, and that's it. So. Yeah. OK, so on the top of the window, you see the Braille monitor from Orca again. So s that was already explained. So I'm going to exit Orca. Yeah. And we have Geo Key, which is a GNOME on screen keyboard. On screen keyboard. You can then click on Compose, and then you get a virtual keyboard on which you can click the character you're interested in. So it's pretty clicky clicky, but it's a bit lagging and performances are said not to be that great. Yeah. So I'm going to move to another piece of, of software, which is called Dasher. So we have some boxes and we have uh, uh, different areas. On the top, you've got the lowercase. On the middle, uh, the uppercase. On in red, the little red point is numbers, in green punctuation, and at the very bottom, uh, stuff like uh, white, uh, white spaces. So you only have to move in some direction to select a character you, the character you're in interested in. So that would be an H, and then a E, and then L, L, O, space. OK, so we can stop a bit. That was easy because I already typed that word before, so it's predictive. And uh, the next uh, letters are um, automatically closer to the pointer that, uh, that the other one. So I was going to say hello again. Yeah, oh, I forgot to say. Um, the text actually type is displayed on the very bottom, oh, the very top of it. So I'm going to continue my little sentence. But really, so that was cheating a bit. So I'm going to spell Mario to show you that it's not that trivial. So that would be somewhere. Mm, yeah, there. Searching for M. Then a A in lowercase, and then a R, I, and O. So you can click to stop. And possibly you can move to another point and then do some correction, like inserting a new character. So we could try to add a question mark there but it um, I only spent some dozens of minutes so I'm not quite good enough um, that would be there punctuation stuff and then and then question mark and that's it Any question about Dasha?
Um, as far as I know, it integrates into GNOME, so you can control applications. Can you show that? Uh, I don't know that much about ad integration, but the goal is to have that uh, text uh, input to grab some text and then uh, mostly copy past it into whatever uh, uh, form or input uh, text uh, text input uh, you want in your application. I don't know. I didn't read the manual yet. <laughs> Wait, 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 please. Aha. Uh -huh. That's a pretty good question. And uh, the question was, if you, if you can only move your head up and down, uh, how do you select the text that you type and do copy and paste? Uh, well, okay, it's probably written somewhere, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, that, that's the meaning of how. <laughs> The really interesting part of GOK is to have at the keyboard you can uh, you can have the lines um, moving uh, automatically and then select one of them, and okay. uh, and you only need one event to select anything. You have uh, have as you as you show a keyboard, but you could uh, control all the menus and all things in the genome with only one event. Okay, is a really interesting Thanks. part. Uh, I'd like to ask something that is not um, related to disabilities, but many people over here have an open MOCO, and um, I think there may be a few things that we may sympathize when we see an on-screen keyboard. Um, accessibility is not just to compensate with disabilities, it's um, is to improve what you can do. Um, Technology for the blind can be used in uh, satellite navigators in the car when your eyes should actually look at the road. Um, technology for entering a keyboard on the screen uh, for people who can't type can be used by people who don't have a keyboard. So work on accessibility, work on ATSPI is something that comes out really useful when we are actually trying to go beyond the normal screen and keyboard model of computing and we are building into something else. Work on OCR, work on um, text-to-speech uh, is something that we can reuse pretty much anywhere. And that makes accessibility technology extremely exciting because we are basically using Mario and Sam as the pioneers that kind of make sure that we'll be able to use our w web browser into something that fits in our pocket and we can just control with like earphones and a couple of buttons. Um, and, and, and that could be a call for, for people who actually don't need accessibility technology right away to actually have a look uh, and maybe kind of get their hands dirty with it because, because it may be useful for Many other things. Correct me if I'm wrong. If if there's no more questions, then we're done with this talk. Thanks for coming. And next talk we'll be talking about hardware design with Debian. Thanks. <laughs>